Welcome, my name is Patrick Hurley. And I'm Robin Taylor, and we're here at the Shepherd Montana Project for Floating Island International. Uh, Patrick here is going to explain to you a little bit about this uh, mini Leviathan that we've launched this summer. Great, thanks Rob. Yeah, so the mini Leviathan is an, is an incorporated technology by Floating Island International. It involves uh, an air, air diffuser and a deflector plate to promote artificial aeration and circulation throughout the Biohaven matrix. So behind me you can see we have a broad range of wildflowers and wetland plants that are thriving on the island. These help promote surface area and biofilm activity which help cycle nutrients in and out of the water through various ecological food webs. So Pat, are we uh, trying to cycle nutrients back into the fish? Yeah, Rob. So up here at Dry Pond, we're trying to promote uh, nutrient cycling and removal by growing an enormous amount of minnows, for instance, in this pond. Um, so sometimes when we pull up our minnow traps, we'll have upwards of three, four, five hundred minnows in a single pull. And so the, the reason for this is by growing higher organisms such as minnows and fish, it's the most effective way to cycle nutrients such as phosphorus out of the water. Yeah, so with the launch of this mini Leviathan, Patrick, we've uh, seen a lot of changes here at Dry Pond. Can you explain those to us? Absolutely. So I'll start with uh, the past. In the pe previous summer, we weren't able to successfully grow minnows at all. Uh, what would happen is the boom-bust cycles of the algae would remove all the DO, dissolved oxygen, and the minnows would effectively suffocate. Uh, this summer, with the with the uh, application of the mini Leviathan, we've been able to promote higher de dissolved oxygen levels, and therefore we've been able to grow and sus sustain the populations of minnows that we're looking for. And I also see a reduction in the amount of algae in the pond since last year. Absolutely. So with the incorporation of more dissolved oxygen, we have more uh, fish that are grazing on the algae, and therefore reducing the numbers and vectoring with a more, um, how can you say, healthy uh, water quality and ecosystem in the pond. Great, so this will help when this water leaves this property and ends up in the Gulf of Mexico in the dead zone, it won't have the effect that it did last year, last summer before it was cleaned up. Absolutely, the goal is as the water leaves the property, we're trying to make it as clean as possible and we're doing a pretty good job. Cool, say. great. So Patrick, uh, what's the diversity of uh, the animal life in this pond, the uh, aqua life? Yeah, Rob, so I've noticed just from my time here at Shepherd that um, the, the improved water quality has allowed an incredibly diverse ecosystem to develop. So what we used to see was just uh, kind of a monoculture of cyanobacteria that would um, limit how many different organisms could thrive in the pond. So there weren't many higher animals or the fish populations would crash and we were kind of just you know dealing with a, a dead zone. But with this new technology that we're imp implementing we've been able to engender an incredibly diverse ecosystem within just this pond. We've moved from you know a very limited diversity to we now have enormous populations of stickleback minnows, fathead minnows, lots of tad bullfrog tadpoles and adults. We have an enormous amount of macroinvertebrates and crustaceans like snails and, and dragonfly nymphs and, and stoneflies and caddisflies. And we also have actually seen mink activity, which means that predators are now moving into this spot, signifying an incredible boost in the health and well-being of the aquatic life. Great. So, Patrick, can you tell me about um, the feed? What feeds this, uh, this pond and, and all of the other waterways on Shepherd Project? Great, Rob. Well, the two sources for this pond are um, quite different. One, the one source, the primary, primary source, is an ir a 60 mile irrigation ditch that goes throughout the county and this is the last stop. So we get the most heavily polluted water which tends to be very high in phosphorus levels. And the other source comes from a creek which is uh, varying in its quality of water incredibly. And so we tend to mix the two and although the nutrients aren't in the correct ratio that we hope for, for uh, improving water quality, we're able to work with it and manage it. And as the water moves downstream through the property, we've actually seen an incredible increase in the water quality and the aquatic life and biodiversity. We actually have a freshwater sponge in the in Fish Fry Lake, which is almost unheard of in this sort of 
ecological setting and watershed. It's it's generally a characteristic of incredibly good water quality. So it's a great indicator that we're doing what we need to be doing to improve the area's water. Yeah, it's uh, just amazing. When I look at this, I find it so hard to believe that this is canal water, or it was at one time. What's special about this particular island, Rob? Well, this is what we would call one of our mini leviathans, and it's a floating stream bed. And what it does is it circulates water from the bottom to the top and uh, energizes it with dissolved oxygen, which really helps um, fish and aquatic life throughout the whole pond. The ability to do that is something that is new to Floating Island International and the entire water quality market. And that the way that we can do this is by pulling water from the bottom and deflecting it in a horizontal fashion. The combination of aeration, circulation, and surface area is a biomimetic way of treating water by just incorporating an immense amount of bacteria to kind of cycle the nutrients out of the water and then leads to higher and higher food chain levels. Great.